Oh! The wheel. Right there. See that debris on the screen? Alrighty, what the heck is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are in the garage and we have the 2020 Velocity Duty. Velocity Duty? I don't know what it's called. Velocity Blue, Super Duty, Velocity Duty. Okay, Velocity Duty, so what we're doing today is we're doing the 2020 and up disaster prevention kit. So everyone knows that the 6.7 Powershooks has the CP4 high pressure fuel pump. <laughs> CP4s known to go bad, especially with contaminated fuel such as water, bad fuel, dirt, don't stay up on your fuel filters. The CP4s do not like contaminated fuel. So, do you think it's easy to contaminate your fuel? Yeah. How? Oh. Guaranteed. Guaranteed contamination? I don't think it's on the owner's side, I think it's on the pump side. So you get bad fuel kind of anywhere. You go to a crappy gas station, you get bad fuel, your CP4 blows up and your $10,000, all your injectors are bad, your fuel cooler's bad, your fuel lines are bad. So it just causes a lot, of, a, a lot of issues. So by now you would see that there is a few things floating around the market, such as a CP4 disaster prevention kit. Now, if you guys want like a super in-depth on how that protects your CP4 system and your high pressure system and the whole process there, um, video will be linked, I think, Maybe here. You guys can check that out at the end of this video. Now, when you talk to these people, do you look at the camera lens or do you look at you with beyond the camera? Where do you look? What well, looks better? You can look wherever you want. Like, if I look right now, what's it look like I'm looking at? It looks creepy. Like I'm looking weirdly. You're like, what if, what if I just look at you? That's good. What if I look at the fuzzy thing? No, then you're looking above it. Really? Oh, All right, so. Since the Cummins video completely flopped, what are you looking at? You looking at my boots? Yeah. Dude, we're starting a trend. Hiking boots are in the deal right now. They're coming back. Everyone just wear hiking boots all day, every day. Just wear hike, just wear these. Look at yours, show yours. Listen. All right, so anyway, since the Cummins video fell flat on its face, I'm talking like, Okay, so what the Cummins it. video, hey, I don't know if we just haven't posted in a while, so the algorithm just said, nope, not having it, or if, but the, the, the view duration was good, it, it was watched, right? If it sucked, you guys would watch it for two seconds and then be like, I'm out, peace out, I'm out, see ya. So anyway, I don't know, the, uh, we're, just, we're just gonna move on from that. We're gonna grow, we're gonna learn, and we're gonna move on from that. So anyways, today, not even talking about the Cummins video anymore. We have the Velocity Duty in the garage. What are we doing today? Uh, I'm just here. Wow, the hood looks green behind you. Green head. Green, green. Mallard, Drake. Um, all right, so there's three different kits for these real, on a real note. There's three different kits, disaster-wise. There's the 11 to 16 kit, 17 to 19 kit, and 20 and up kit. We did the 17 to 19 kit on the Platinum, and that truck is running a 55 over Warren pump, and it runs flawless. We have a super hot tune in that thing, over 700 horsepower, and I've not, I haven't had any uh, rail pressure issues. Um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself in the voice, so I'm stuttering. Oh, boys. Fired up this morning. And we're off. All right, so we're comparing. This is cool, but like this is gonna. Well, it's a cheap tripod. It's a $19 tripod from Amazon. All right, we're getting off topic. We're comparing cameras here. And real quick, I do wanna make this somewhat legitimate so we're not just down here totally screwing around. So in order to do that, you have to take off all of this stuff, meaning the upper intake manifold, um, the lower intake manifold part that goes to the turbo. So this black, this big black piece here where I'm pointing on right now, that goes to your turbo underneath of this. Um, so all of that has to come off because the top of the CP4 has to be exposed. You gotta pull off this crossover pipe from EGR um, right here. This whole thing comes off first. Then the lower one, uh, you gotta pull your intake tube. Um, so basically that is pretty much like the major downfall to installing the kit. I just wanna run this because if I have a nice tripod, you know what I mean? I just wanna glide, not this herky-jerky stuff. All right, so I'm gonna say this right now. I don't recommend doing the disaster prevention kit on 2020. No. <laughs> Not that the kit's bad, the kit's great. It'll save your fuel system if something goes bad. So yeah, might wanna do it, save 10 grand. That was a freaking disaster to get the intake manifold, the lower intake tube. To get that out of this truck was a disaster. Look how dirty we got the thing. 
So like this is this is the intake manifold which goes into the engine. This is pr this is after this is post intercooler. There is just pounds and pounds of sludge just straight built up on this thing. It's like I just scraped the side right there. It's so bad in here. It's nuts. And this truck has 30,000 miles on it, non-tuned, just completely factory. It's it's so bad. I mean, like that's the throttle valve, the throttle body thing. Look at this. It's like it's wet. So you're not only are you sending the EGR gases back through here, you are combining the EGR gases with oil from the crankcase vent. Okay, like okay, here we go. Here, here's the this is the lower this is the lower intake tube that goes to the to the turbo. So this this oval in here will come off of your air intake, and this will go down and it routes into the turbo. Look at the wet oil in there. There's just wet wet oil. I, I I scraped it out with my finger just to you know just to see, and I should have did that on camera. Yes. So this tube here, the side intake tube, what you're looking at right there, that is the CCV inlet. So it comes out of the crankcase vent, goes through its filter, supposedly supposed to drain the oil out off of it, and then the the gases, the air, goes into this tube, straight in through the hole in the bottom. And goes right into your engine, right into the right into the turbo. So the turbo compresses oil-soaked air, sends it through the intercooler, and then and then into here. EGR exhaust gases come in here. This is where it gets mixed with 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 compressed air after the intercooler comes in here, mixes with exhaust gas, goes through your intake manifold, intake plenum, and then and then into the intake ports on the top of the cylinder head valve cover deals. So I mean, it, it's just a whole bunch of, of bad air. Oil soaked exhaust soot air going into your engine. This is cold side. I mean, that's just oil soaked air. I mean, there, there's so much oil. It's like literally, it's wet. It's wet with oil. Um, now that comes out of the intercooler. So this is compressed air, hot side off the turbo. Intercooler goes through, comes through the cold side here. That's how much oil. So imagine how much oil is actually in the intercooler. They need a freaking oil drain. On the intercooler for how much oil goes in there. And don't even say that it lubes your turbo. If you say that, I'm going to be mad at you. I mean, like, that's crazy. So imagine how much better the truck will run on clean, cool, dense air. They really change it. So here's my hand. I mean, we're talking like three fingers. That's a small turbo. It does have instant spool, so this must be why tuned they're limited to like 590 ish wheel horsepower because i mean that that's that's tiny okay so i got all the parts set up for for the thing i do kind of want to show you guys how to do this if you want some pointers but it's, it's it's fairly simple um so this is the the exo filter this is the rear return filter there's a little o-ring that goes you have to make sure you put the o-ring in little screen goes with the filter you have your top return so we'll get to that in a second that's actually your, this is your feed line. This comes off of your uh, fuel temp sensor. We'll get to that in a second. I'm just showing you assembly. Fitting goes on the top of the adapter, um, as you can see. So you'll be looking down in the engine like this. It'll point towards the driver's side. This is the volume control valve that I took off of the CP4. So this just sits in there like this um, with two T25 bolts. Um, so you can pull this off and check out the screen. You can actually see a couple little pieces of debris on there. Where'd they go? Right there. See that debris on the screen? I was super careful taking this out, so I definitely didn't get anything on the screen. So maybe the pump's already sending metal out. Is this will push down onto the CP4 just like that, and then the, the, the volume control valve will go into here. You just want to make sure your O-rings are good and everything is good O-ring-wise on here. Um, and then the adapter side of CP4 side will be done. There's two new supplied Allen bolts, so you get rid of the T25s. Um, obviously, they need to be longer for the thickness of the adapter. All right, guys, that's it. We have the disaster prevention kit fully on. The return filter's on. That was a huge pain, just like everything else with this whole install, because the Allen bolt to hold the retainer piece onto the bottom of the mini keg is on the bottom. 
So you have to have like a short little island to get up in there um, because there's no room. Mini keg being right there, that's the return style, that's the return filter. Um, so this is your return line that comes up through here, hits this line, goes back to your tank. So the, the retainer's on, on the very bottom, so you have to have a special Allen key. Actually, you can just cut your own, just cut one down, get to that bottom bolt, tighten this on. Um, the, where, where you tap in for fuel is right here under the temp sensor. You have your little adapter. You can see the SPE adapter, the black piece there with the, with the braided line coming off of there, going down to the distribution block that sits on top of the CP4. All of that is installed, so we are 100% done with the CP4 Disaster Prevention Kit for the 2020. We're gonna cut this video here because I feel like we're getting a little long in this video, but we're not done with the truck. The truck's not done. We're gonna continue to do stuff on the truck um, while we have certain things off, such as that intercooler piping, um, the top manifold and stuff. The main problem was like fishing out the intake manifold, like the big intake piece. Getting that out was probably the hardest. I mean, the, not the bolt, the physically taking it out of the truck, like uh, puzzle-wise. It hits that coolant riser over there. Uh, you can see the riser coming up from center of the valley of the engine. It hits that coolant riser. Yeah, you can pop that off, but you're gonna have coolant flowing everywhere. Um, so you just kind of gotta take your time, weasel it out. Other than that, we're done. We're going to the house. We'll be back in the morning for another video. Um, 2020 mods in full effect. But all right, guys, if you made it this far, you are freaking awesome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Join the journey with the 2020. We're going to be modding her out. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Actually, the whole bed on this truck is full of boxes of parts for this truck. Super pumped, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Stay tuned. You'll see it. It's going to be cool. I like it. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. No, I'm not excited. He's not excited because he doesn't want to work. <laughs> but all right, guys, that's it. We're out. We'll hit to you. We'll s what? We'll see you on, we'll see you on the next one. Uh... Do, do peace. <laughs>